John Erickson here with the Horn Notes video podcast. Our topic today is a horn like Dennis Brain played. While all serious students of the horn have likely heard recordings made by the legendary horn soloist Dennis Brain, most listeners today have never actually played or heard live in a room horns that are very much like the horns he performed upon. The instruments he used are distinctive, and the three different setups were used principally. The first French horn played by Dennis Brain was a horn his father had purchased as a spare. Aubrey played an 1865 Raoul Labbé natural horn that had been converted into a valved horn, and Dennis started on a slightly newer Raoul Milieu horn that had also been converted from a natural horn. I don't have access to either flavor of Raoul here at Arizona State University, but when I did join the faculty, I was excited in 2001 to find out we had a most interesting substitute. One of my faculty predecessors, Ralph Lockwood, has a strong interest in piston valve horns and was able to obtain for the university this vintage instrument, which is marked Superior Class, Hawks and Son, Denim and Street, Piccadilly Circus, London. It has been dated to around 1916 and is patterned after 19th century French models similar to those used by Dennis Braid. Let's hear a bit of Mozart on it. As to impressions from playing the piston F horn, on the positive side, the piston horn sounds much like a natural horn. It has an open quality that is hard to describe, but it relates to the light weight of the instrument. You have the distinct sense of not blowing through a lot of weight. As to negatives, the big negative of this particular instrument is the roll on the top F. With careful choice of crook and care and articulation, it is less obvious, but still something that makes me as a player a bit fearful to note. Also, it sounds much like a natural horn. This is something that could be a positive or a negative, actually, depending on your perspective. The horn has a smaller sound than a modern horn, to be sure. Here's a brief example performed on a comparable natural horn. The second instrument used in his performing career was the same instrument, but reset and crooked in B-flat alto. Using the hawk's horn again as a stand-in, it does have a bit different visual look with the short crook and the valve slides pushed in. Although it probably was a brief challenge to relearn his technique with new fingerings, I can easily see why Brain moved to the B-flat crook. The instrument plays much more easily with a clear light sound, easy tone production into the high range, and it is light as a feather. It has a very light sound that would work very well for Mozart concertos with a chamber orchestra. And on either crook, the legato is superb in valve changes. Piston valves really have a different feel than rotary valves. For a comparison, here's a bit more of the same Mozart concerto. The last instrument he used regularly during his performing career was an Alexander Model 90 single B-flat with a stopping valve. On trying this horn initially, I was immediately attracted to the sweet sound of this horn. It is very responsive and very easy to hold. It's very light in the hands. My example also has rebuilt valves, so it plays much better than the average horn that is 50 or 60 years old. Switching to a horn such as this certainly made a lot of sense for a solo artist such as Dennis Brain. I believe once it was set up correctly for him and his mouthpiece, it was relatively speaking a sports car, and it must have opened up new worlds of works to Dennis Brain. Plus, the sound is modern and much more similar to that of a double horn than his piston horn would have produced. It is wonderful for Mozart.
While it does not really fit for most of the ensemble playing I do, I do enjoy very much playing on my Alexander B-flat horn for personal practice, church ensembles, and occasional solo and chamber music performance. The ASU Hawks piston horn also is appreciated for the special classic sound it produces, to be sure, and it'd be extremely interesting to perform on a, in a period instrument ensemble, but it is quite ergonomically challenged. I can see why these have fallen out of use. To close, I would mention that this video is just a portion of a longer presentation originally given as a lecture recital at the 2011 International Horn Symposium in San Francisco, California, and expanded subsequently into an article published in the February 2016 issue of The Horn Call, the journal of the International Horn Society. Please refer to that for even more information on the horns played by Dennis Brain. Thank you for tuning in and be checking for more from the Horn Notes video podcast. Please refer to that for even more information on the horns played by General... Thank <laughs> you.